U.S. President Donald Trump says that he wanted to assassinate the Syrian president back in 2017, but was opposed then by then Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis. Trump told Fox News he did not regret the decision to spare Bashar al-Assad, that he uh, could have lived it with it uh, either way. The uh, president's confession contradicts his remarks in 2018, in which he dismissed any intention of assassinating the Syrian president as a total fiction. But latest revelation supports a veteran journalist Bob Woodward, who had mentioned in his book that Trump wanted to kill Assad. Syria has been torn by bloody war for nearly a decade. The U.S. has played a major role in stoking conflict by supporting terror groups against the Syrian government. And now uh, joining us for this news, news review is uh, Richard Silverstein, journalist and political commentator from Seattle, Washington, and uh, David Yarubian, professor of history at Cal State University, San Bernardino, California. Hello, gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I guess we'll start up north there in uh, Seattle with you, Richard. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the program. And uh, Richard uh, Woodward, he seems to be getting all the goods on the U.S. president. And this guy, is, I mean, his information doesn't stop, does it? Your thoughts on the story? Well, it, it dribbles out day by day, and I'm sure he's got more coming in the future. But this one is really uh, takes the cake. Uh, apparently, uh, Trump was told by his intelligence operatives that they had Assad in, in their sights and that if he gave the go-ahead, that, uh, that the U.S. could assassinate Assad. And um, <clears throat> the only person standing between uh, reason and insanity uh, seemed to have been Jim Mattis, and who uh, basically told the president he couldn't do it. And even though technically the president could override Mattis, uh, he chose not to. But now, in retrospect, he says that uh, Mattis is a loser and uh, Mattis didn't know how to win. I suppose that killing the uh, president of Syria would have been winning in some uh, odd uh, kind of universe that he inhabits. But uh, uh, this kind of, this kind of uh, impulsive, uh, dangerous, uh, I don't know what other adjectives you can use for it, uh, behavior by Trump just continues to prove that he is he's derailed he's he's kind of i don't know if you want to say out of his mind but uh it would have sent the entire region in the middle east into an absolute uh unstable mess um, russia would have been infuriated because assad is one of his allies and uh it, it just would have been open season on on everything american throughout the world thank you richard and, and david welcome to the program and it's funny, Richard so should uh, allude to that. It seems like Donald Trump, he gets his, uh, his, I don't know, his policy strategy from watching, uh, I don't know, uh, the Godfather, uh, you know, trilogy. I mean, the things that he tries to do, like the, the thugism that he tries to employ, the, the, the fear he tries to instill in his opponents. Um, your thoughts on the story, please. Well, serial liars can never keep their story straight. And it, it's just a well-known fact that Trump is is a serial liar. There are, are just scores of cases of, of his blatant lies. And then uh, later him coming out and saying essentially the opposite and denying in some cases having said things that are, are completely on the record. And here we have yet another case of when uh, in 2018, September, with the uh, release of, of Woodward's book, Fear, Trump in the White House, uh, Trump completely denied uh, that he stated the interest in uh, killing the Syrian president, that, that it wasn't even something that was considered. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have him now with his uh, Fox and Friends buddy, Brian Kilmeade. And, of course, in the context of this upcoming election, trying to appeal to his Zionist and evangelical Christian base by uh, expressing uh, his, his interest in uh, 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 killing the Syrian president. Um, and, and, of course, as Richard Silverstein accurately uh, described, blaming this on Mattis, saying, you know, uh, uh, Mattis, and there's a quote, he would keep you in the military, but he didn't know how to win. So um, these are the in inarticulate rantings of a serial liar and a buffoon. But I think that this is a, a critical point that uh, many sources are neglecting to mention. In February of 2018, Mattis is on record, as reported by AP and Newsweek, saying that the United States has no evidence that the Syrian government used sarin at the Khan Sheikhoun uh, site in 2017. This is on record from, from February of 2018. And so therefore, Mattis's uh, advice to the president uh, can likely be considered in this context, not uh, feeling that, that this uh, 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 claim that the Syrian government had used chemical weapons against its own people was solid. And so therefore, um, 
even even though uh, it still would have been against international law, um, just that flat out the United States did not have the evidence, and so therefore Trump should not engage in in this uh, sort of belligerent, violent uh, assassination of a, a national leader. So uh, of course now again in hindsight, Trump is is uh, in in the context of the campaign, he he's uh, going back uh, diametrically opposed 180 degrees to what he had said in September of 2018. But I think that this can be expected because he is a serial liar and. Uh, there is an election coming up, and he's desperately trying to appeal to his base. And Richard, uh, th thank you, David, for that. And, and Richard, had Donald Trump not had Jim Mattis uh, talk him out of it, uh, how do you think that would have played out? Had, had he actually gone through with it, carried out the assassination of another world leader, the assassination, let me get it out, of uh, you know, the Syrian president, what do you think the aftermath would have been looked like? Well, as I mentioned in my first comment to you, it would have been open season on every possible American official anywhere in the world that uh, uh, that the Syrians or their allies could have gotten their hands on. And we know right now there's a purported uh, uh, plot to uh, to assassinate an American official in South Africa. Whether there's any uh, truth to the statement, I know Iran has denied this, but um, there obviously when. When the United States assassinates key leaders of countries, whether they be uh, Qasem Soleimani in Iran or Bashar al-Assad in Syria, there's going to be retaliation, there's going to be repercussions, and the world is going to be destabilized, and it could end up with a powder keg. Now, all you need is a match, and everything will explode. And Trump seems to be like a bull in a china shop. He doesn't really give any consideration to what the impact of his decisions will be. He's just impetuous and he's unstable. And whoever comes to him with the latest uh, plot to do something that strikes his fancy, he's uh, willing to go 100% uh, all, all speed ahead. So we see what happened when Mattis quit and uh, stopped being the Secretary of Defense, then uh, then the U.S. did assassinate Qasem Soleimani. And uh, whatever you want to say about um, um, uh, about him as a, as a leader, I know he's quite admired in Iran, but it didn't really, the assassination didn't achieve its desired effect. It didn't change Iran's behavior. It didn't, uh, it didn't gain anything for the United States. It was merely a wanton act of uh, state terrorism on our part. So when you're a president of the United States, you're supposed to have a strategy and a policy that's supposed to lead to something and supposed to, uh, supposed to pursue the interests of the, of the country. And nothing that Trump does does that. There's nothing pragmatic. There's nothing reasonable about anything he does. He's really uh, the most dangerous world leader by far, and maybe the most dangerous going back to uh, Adolf Hitler in the 1940s. And David, it's funny that Richard should say that because that's the, 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 the gist of this whole story. You got a guy, a, a general named Mad Dog, talking you out of a violent decision. Your final thoughts on this, please. Well, Trump is just so wishy-washy, and there's so much malarkey that even in his statement, um, he waffles on it. He says, well, you know, I, I don't know if I would have regretted doing that or not. And so um, it, we're clearly dealing with a serial liar and a buffoon who will go to any lengths uh, verbally or in terms of, of the, the actions that he takes as the executive to secure his rule, to try to perpetuate it, um, and to, to uh, uh, provide some sort of, of uh, uh, what, successes, victories, movement for those who, who essentially underwrote his campaign, such as Sheldon Adelson. And so proclaiming to Brian Kilmeade on Fox and Friends that he was uh, willing to kill Bashar al-Assad, but that was held back, but he didn't know. It might have been a good thing. It might have been a bad thing. This is just classic Trump. Um, and, and so in closing, this is not going to sway anyone who was a Trump supporter yesterday from changing their mind about Trump. And unfortunately, this is not going to sway uh, anyone's view, or, or fortunately, I guess you should say, to towards Trump. What it does do, though, is lend uh, extra credence to what the investigative reporter Bob Woodward has written about Trump, both in his 2018 book as well as in his most recent book. And, and so therefore, I think that uh, at least that is, is an important outcome of, of Trump's uh, statement on Fox and Friends. All right, guys, good stuff. Thank you both for joining us on the program. Do stay safe. We'll talk soon. Richard Silverstein there from Seattle, Washington, and David Yagubian joining us out of San Bernardino, California. And viewers, that's a wrap for this uh, segment of your Press TV's News Review. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.